Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of Making an Impact Wrestling. I've been your host, G Banks, and today we're looking at the episode that aired on the 1st of February, 2018. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This is Stooge Club. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, shit. Like, I know you... I told you last week, I'm taking over... Everything! Like, I get- Everything! I get why you, you wore the black robe last week, but can you stop wearing it now? It's really unnerving. Absolutely not. I am the Stooge. We're kicking off the show. Oh, God. It starts with a mysterious arrival backstage. Who could it be? Uh, I don't know. I can't tell by the body posture. Neither can I. We'll find out later in the show. Our opening match. Why are you yelling? As I said, I'm taking over everything. Oh God. Oh, God. oh my. Jesus Christ. Dude. Our opening match is Falabar versus that hippie loser, Matt Seidel. Wait, what? Hippie loser? He's you heard me. Grand Championship. He literally changed everything that we hated about the Grand Championship. You mean everything that made it special? The Grand Championship was a unique match type that stood out, and now it's just another ordinary match. But we have episodes of literally, like from last week or weeks before, where you were. Saying, I don't know what you're talking about. What? So Falabar, the whole match. This is a power versus speed match but before we get to it we got to take note that this is now a four-sided ring mm -hmm. impact wrestling's gone back to four sides why what why what do you think about the six it? sides makes it special unique this is what impact was all about they're back to four bland sides of but ring. i feel like because now bland. because the, can i speak sorry is that all right Am I fine to... okay because you know impact's changing now I feel like they've gone back to the four sides because, you know, we might see be seeing more, you know, newcomers come in, like all these new indie dudes, international dudes. And, you know, to, let's be honest, most of the world uses four-sided rinks. So I feel like it just would make more sense to use for four-sided ring for all these newcomers to go Brussels and just so they can feel comfortable in. They should learn six sides. You come on Impact, learn six sides. But, so the company's got to change for them. That's what you're saying. No, it's not change for them. It's just like, I feel like it's a convenience. All right, it. we'll be stuck on this forever. Let's move on. So other changes. The <sighs> Grand Championship is just a regular match now. Great. No more uh, judges. No more. I thought rooms. it was more exciting like this now. I we, The reason why it was so bad or unpopular was because of the yeah, judges. you would. Um, the other changes, we I get would. a Rasta ref. A Rasta ref. Really? Really? Can we not have a ref who's stoned? Can we just have a regular ref, please, in the ring? Just a regular referee, a dude and in a black you, and white shirt. How do you know he was stoned? Did you, he's a rasta, come on. He wasn't a rasta, dude. He had, he was maybe, just maybe a guy that liked coloring his hair. He's a know. rasta with dreads. C come on, man. Anyway. No stereotyping so the, on this show, please. As I said earlier, the match is power versus speed. So Adele's trying to take Falabar off his feet. Falabar should just get out of the ring and go back to sumo wrestling. What? Leave the wrestling to the real wrestlers. What? Well, it's a bit harsh, don't you think? Falabar's been excellent. You know, he, he's not the, like, you know, the top dogs, but he's hopefully, you know, shown his... I, I don't think much better of Matt Seidel. He should just go back to Jamaica. Oh, God damn it, dude. What is wrong with you? So Seidel does a, a bit of interesting offense, I guess. Interesting. I thought he was doing great offense. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, he really showed why he deserved that title. And obviously he must have some sort of, you know, backing because the guys backstage obviously listened to him. And gave him his, you know... Oh, because he's the champ, they changed the match for him. Woohoo. Yeah, see? So using his power. Using politics and backstage manipulations. No manipulations whatsoever. Anyway, Follow Bar was using a, a unique offense of power and big man moves, as well as a couple of little, you know, things that you wouldn't expect from someone his size. And a couple of things you would, like rolling on a human being. That's not a move. That's, that's not a move. It's pretty funny, though. Gotta give it to him. It's not a move! But What's he just rolling on a human being? But with that size, you would you want to get rolled on him? No, absolutely not! Exactly, there we go then. Alright, so Matt Seidel wins a match with his shooting star press into the pin. I say it was an pin. awesome shooting star. It's so... You can say what you want. It doesn't so, make it true. It's so just like... So pinpoint. It's just majestic to watch. 
As I was saying last week, it's like a wave crashing. Uh, he flies like a bird and he's all sexy up there. And you guys going to get a room together? No, I'm just saying it's a really yeah, nice how he yeah. executes it. Weekend stay at a B&B? If he wants it that way, I don't know. <laughs> We've got a, a replay of Bobby Trader putting Dan Lambert through a table and then hurting poor John Hartnett. What is this about? Bobby is a Wait, traitor. He is a traitor. How do you know John's name? What, John Hartnett? Yeah. How do you not know his name? He's an MMA legend. He's a trainer at Top Team America. He basically runs the show for Dan Lambert, one of the greatest MMA trainers of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you not know this? Okay, I apologize for even asking. Right, so anyway, so what, Bobby just go completely rogue, complete traitor, hurts poor Dan Lambert, who looks like he's gone now. Yeah. Where we're losing one of the greatest mic workers and ring technicians in wrestling history. Well, I think his time was up, don't you think? I would. He I was, was. He was bullying the. Wrestlers. How was his time up? He has not won the title yet. He should be heavyweight champion, Impact Wrestling heavyweight champion, Dan Lambert. A big, that would raise a a the profile of this ask. company to lofty levels that we've never seen before. I don't think so. They tried to bring that in and it obviously didn't work. So, What are you talking about it didn't work? Like, I'm sure they've got better ratings now than they've ever had before. Just because they get a rub from Dan Lambert appearing on the show. Mm-hmm. They get a rub from Dan Lambert. If that's what you want to believe, I guess. Poor John Hart. No, I wish him the best. We're all thinking about you. We You're hope you recover quickly. thinking about him. That's it. Uh, I don't even know who he is until just then. You're a horrible human being. What? How? Continue so Trevor Lee life. and Caleb Connolly are backstage. They're just stating facts about how awesome Trevor Lee is. These are just clear facts because we know them to be true. Mm. Um, Trevor Lee is the best and we are Trevor. No, and we... he's got a plan. What plan? We'll find out later on. Because mm. he's smart. He's going to use TW. Wait, what? Tactical waiting. You know? You can't use tactical waiting. I told you. I'm taking over everything. Oh, God. Uh, uh. Everything. Oh, whatever. Just don't hurt me. Can't continue on. We find out it's going to be KM. Versus that traitor Bobby Lashley tonight for what he did to Dan Lambert last week. This is a, a brilliant match to start with because KM is just out wrestling the all American wrestler, the MMA quote unquote superstar Bobby Trader. He's absolutely destroying him wrestling, out wrestling the wrestler, making him look like a fool. You know what this proves, right? The KM is a better wrestler and a better MMA fighter than mm-hmm. Bobby Lashley. Can you tell me the outcome of this match, by the way, please? What do you want to know? I just want to know the ending. What? When KM suicide flipped from the ring mm-hmm. over the ropes onto Bobby Trader and making, making him go splat outside the ring. That was great, wasn't it? That was really... Yeah, it was all right. It was pretty good. Yeah. How about when KM threw Lashley into the stairs? That was awesome. It was all right. It wasn't that too was, bad. That, that was good. That was yeah, good. But, Come on, that was the best bit. Yeah, but tell me the ending of this match because that's what I think everyone wants to know. So Lashley must have cheated somehow and got a spear cheated. on KM. Cheated. To win. And because he cheated, it doesn't count. That that means that KM is still undefeated. <laughs> Undefeated? He lost like two weeks ago. What do you mean he's undefeated? What are you talking about? KM is undefeated. He lost on Genesis. Are you calling me a liar? You calling me a liar? KM is undefeated. He's undefeated. You can't win off a cheat. He cheated. Lashley cheated somehow. We'll check the replay. He cheated. So KM won. KM is still undefeated. I'm pretty sure he didn't cheat. There's no proof of him Undefeated. He's prove like, me different. Undefeated. I did just Undefeated. prove you. I told you. Two weeks ago he lost. Refs can lie. Refs lie all the time. And then you check the replay. Refs lie. <sighs> KM won. He's undefeated. Dude, just continue on, please. There's no point. Joseph Parks is checking in with uh, Grandma Jenny to check on Chandler after he sacrificed Chandler to Congo Kong because he's a bad uncle. He's a bad uncle. Who? 
Joseph Parks. He what? sacrificed his nephew to uh, Congo Kong. He didn't sacrifice his nephew. Of course his he nephew did. wanted to. Why didn't he stop it? Why didn't he stop it? He couldn't stop it. You've seen Austin Kong. He you sacrificed gonna, him. You're gonna go jump in there and, Kong, and stop Congo Kong? Congo destroyed Chandler. It was mm. a, sli- a beautiful thing to watch. You say and so. As he's apologizing to Grandma Jenny, the princess, Jimmy Jacobs, hangs up on her, tells her that poor Joseph's going to have to call her back and that he wants Abyss versus Congo Kong next week. Joseph Parks tries to tell him Abyss isn't coming back and Jimmy stops him and reminds him the princess always gets what he wants. Um, I don't know. Maybe it would be pretty hard to find Abyss. Oh, I'm sure the princess has her ways. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, I'm sure. Next up, we had that traitor Bobby promo in. Thinks he's awesome. Thinks he's some kind of champion. Thinks he won the match. Wait till we see the replay. He didn't win. He didn't win. Because KM's undefeated. Do I really have to... He didn't well, win. Um, what, what do you want? Like, watch the replay. He cheated. He didn't win. And you can't cheat and win. Uh, I'll, the ref didn't see him cheating. We didn't see him cheating. But he cheated. And he won. That doesn't make sense now. Of course it makes sense. What? Just think about it. Yeah. We didn't see I it. So the ref about... didn't see it. But it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Because we didn't see it all the way sitting here. And the ref didn't see it. That means he cheated. Is Absolutely. that what you yeah, he's just that good a cheater. This is what I'm dealing with. He's that good a cheater. With people. This is what I'm dealing with now. Next up, we had the goddess, Laurel Van S, making her way to the ring. She's versing, um, was it Kimberly? Kara. Kira Kate, Hogan. Kira, Kira Hogan. Mm. Kira Hogan. Uh, I got down here, Jobber. Well, maybe she's related to a Hogan. Did you not know that? He did refer to himself as uh, somebody of African-American descent in that video he made. He, he did. He, he did. did. Mm. He did. So you absolutely mm-hmm. could be. This match was completely one-sided. Laurel was absolutely destroying Kimberly. It's Kimberly, right? Kira Hogan. Uh, yeah, Kim Hogan. Just destroying her. Making her look like a fool out there. Until that idiot Ali... Comes down the idiot. ramp. Yet yeah, that idiot, that dumb you love ditzy. Ali. Bo- <laughs> Why would I ever love someone? Look at that. You love. Look at that. You've loved Ali since day it looks one. Like she's a, yeah, somebody that needs, you know. Are help. you being serious now? Absolutely. Look Dude, at I her. I will make a highlight reel of you saying how much. Look you at love. her. I am. Look, look at her. What's wrong with her? It, it looks like a child trying to pretend to be an adult. I think she's trying to be, you know, herself. And that's, you know, what makes Ali special. Oh, she can be herself somewhere else. Because I don't need it. Right. And neither did Laurel. Because it it literally interrupted her in the middle of an unprettier. Distracting her so um, Kimberly Hogan could get the roll up. That wasn't distracting. What? Somebody standing on the ramp yelling at you in the middle of a match. Well, you know, Ali just wanted to do what uh, Laurel's been doing to her for weeks. would never do anything like that. She's a goddess. She's not a goddess. She's been proving it for weeks and weeks and why she's... She is the goddess of impact and everybody should be bowing down to her. She's a champion for a reason. She's that good. That's why everyone's jealous. That's why Ali's jealous of her. But she cheated last week. And what are you talking about? She would never cheat. Yeah, talk about cheating. How come you're not going down she home for She would never it? cheat. Mm, okay. It's Ali that cheated by distracting her. So, what was her name again? Mm. Kira Hogan. Could get a roll up. Job, job, whatever. Mm. That's, that's cheating. So that's flat out cheating. It's not cheating. Kira Hogan embraced her Hogan spirit and got the win. By cheating like a Hogan. No, Hogan never cheated. He used political manipulations, backstage shenanigans. He cheated his way to every title he got. No, he did all right. You don't know that. Next up, we had interview bot, some random thing with a microphone, uh, with, of course, EC3 and Alberto El Patron. She fails to call him the pride of Mexico. What is wrong with you, woman? What is wrong with the greatest export of Mexico's history? The pride of Mexico, Alberto El Patron. That is his rightful title. That can't, yeah, can't blame her. What, what do you mean you can't blame her? You refer to people by their rightful titles. Okay, if you say so. 
So she's questioning whether they can get along. Look, he's a Carter. Impact needs him. He's Patron, the greatest Mexican export of all time. They'll figure it out. They're just a little hot under the collar. It's going to happen when you're both that good. Mm, we'll see. LAX comes out to the ring. Conan cuts a promo trying to make OVE look bad. Really? Those losers? Those thugs? Those degenerates? LAX? Trying to make Wait, OVE what? the youngest, hottest team in wrestling at the moment? The Chris Brothers and Sammy Callahan trying to make them look bad? You hate over. What are you talking? Excuse me. Refer to them by their right name. Over. Ohio versus everything. Why? You the, hate them. The best young talent in wrestling today. They're horrible. They look like they, they are amazing. Did they, you see how good they look tonight? They look like they just came out of 2003, my guy. Uh, yeah, and LAX look like a Cypress Hill video. What's your point? That's a good thing. How is that? A good, looking like thugs is a good thing. Yes, that's the whole point of hip-hop. Anyway, OVE cuts an amazing promo. Sally, Sammy Callahan is a promo master and just destroyed Conan on the microphone, making him look like a fool. So Conan has to chase them out of the ring and chase them down. Like, hey, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I still got things to say. Conan, it made me look stupid. Conan called him a lesbian. It was hilarious. He called him a dude that <laughs> looked like he got half in a sex change and didn't, you know. And then the doctor looked at him and said, eh, he'll do. He can't tell me he won. Sally came out and won. So and then he thinks that's I mean. why Sally came out looking like 2003, because he went back to his emo phases. This is what I'm talking about. Low hanging fruit. Disgraceful. Not even like, just go, oh, you're a lesbian. whatever. Do you suck on that period? Dude, you would. You would... LAX. <sighs> they need to get out of the way so some young talent can come in and actually highlight and raise this tag team division to something worthwhile. That's what they're doing right now. LAX is holding down talent, taking their titles. Dude, amongst them too, they like they don't even make the over the age of 40. They're super young. What are you talking about? LAX, Conan is 102. Yeah, but Homicide's he doesn't wrestle. so old, he doesn't wrestle anymore because his bones will break if exactly, someone touches him. Exactly, they don't wrestle. It's exactly. all about so Ortiz and they Santana. Need to, they need to take... Same as the, you know, to, your boys from Overtown. Yeah, yeah, fucking... they need to take the little thugs and go back to wherever they come from, back over the border. Trump, don't worry, Trump will sort this out. Trump will sort it out. Oh, God. I, please, if Conan, if you are listening, I am not endorsing anything he says. If you are going to attack, attack him, not me. Please. Trump will sort it out. Him, not me. So Conan continues and follows and talks shit to Over. Mm. And of course, Trevor Lee and Caleb using some of the greatest TW of all times. Yeah, you're really going to keep using it. It's mine. I've always used it. <sighs> it's mine. I'm just not even going to bother. Yeah. So their tactical waiting was just amazing. They come in and absolutely destroy Santana and Ortiz. Exactly showing you what I've been saying. They're holding down young talent like Trevor Lee and Caleb Connolly who now want their they piece. They attack them. No, no, that's not how it works. Yes. They saw an opportunity and took it that's called tactical waiting. No, they attack them from behind. It's called cheating. Tactical waiting. I, I disagree. No, it's called dodging. Uh, it's tactical waiting. So Trevor Lee and Caleb, after destroying LAX, steal their flags and hightail it, just jobbing LAX out. They didn't job LAX out. Well, well who, stand, who stood tall and who had whose flags? Well, they didn't who, who had out. whose flags? They attacked them from behind. Who had whose flags? They attacked all them from I'm behind. saying is, at the end, somebody was holding someone else's flags. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, okay. Still doesn't prove the point. So Goose and Johnny Boone... A backstage with interview Wait, bot. what? Johnny Boone? Yeah, Johnny Boone. You, you've seen this movie, Boone the Bounty Hunter. I watched it during the week. Have you seen this? No, what is it? Okay, so it's Johnny Impact's movie. He's been talking about it for ages. He wears the, the Boone the Bounty Hunter shirts all the time. And I'm like, it got to me enough that I went, you know what? I'm going to watch this movie. And Jesus, that's 90 minutes of my life I'm never getting back. Johnny Boone is a 
horrible actor in every regard. I have seen props from 1950s Z-grade horror movies with more acting skill than Johnny Boone. And these are all cardboard cutouts. This was the worst vanity picture I've ever seen in my whole life. This was so John Hennigan, Morrison, Mundo, Impact World, Boone, whatever he wants to call himself, could take his shirt off for at least 85 of 90 minutes and run around doing parkour. He's the ultimate superhero in Mexico and America and everybody loves him and he's so good and he saves the day. Dude, this is a piece of shit. You can tell it's written, produced, directed, and acted by Johnny fucking I Love Myself. Come on, dude. It can't be that bad. Oh, absolutely. This is one of those movies that he will sit there and watch on loop with his pants down and dick in hand going, Look at me! I am Boone! His catchphrase in this is, You got booned. You got booned! You got booned! Doesn't matter how many times I repeat it, it's not fucking funny! You got booned! I don't know. The only person that got booned is me for watching that piece of shit! I don't know, maybe you should just give him another chance and watch it again. Boone is as horrible an actor as Johnny Impact is. No, actually, Boone is worse. Oh, God. Anyway. I feel like you're being a bit too harsh on our boy Johnny, but okay. So the Goose and Boone... Talk about the match. Can you show some respect to Moose? Goose. Moose. Goose. Moose. Dude, he's a two time all star freaking NFL player, right? He was playing in the high leagues with Atlanta Falcons, and now he's switched over to wrestling and he's killing it. You can't just call him Goose. What a goose, he should have stuck with football. Oh, God. So they're with Interview Bot, they're talking about their match tonight and how they're going to win. <laughs> yeah, good on you. You're up against. EC3 and Patron, mm. the pride of Mexico. You've got no chance, boys. No chance. Okay, we'll see. Our flashback moment is Drew Galloway coming to the ring to cut a promo on EC3. Challenges EC3 to a fight. EC3 replies, fight all around the outside, pull apart. You seriously chose this for a flashback? A fucking pull apart. Are you serious? Uh of all of Impact Wrestling's history, the best thing you could find to fill five minutes was a pull apart. Maybe, um, well, I actually didn't mind it. It was better than watching Aaron Rex as fat ass on TV. Yeah, that was another epic fail. It's almost like the production team is trying to sync the show with these flashbacks. They're like, let's find the dumbest shit we can find in the archives and put it on. Like the turkey for bowl flashbacks, like the all flashback episode, like the, let's just basically find the worst bits of the 15 years of this company and put it on. Let's see if we can get this shit over. No! Why don't you go back and do something like pull out one of the good things like AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels versus Samoa Joe for the X Division titles. Or how about one of... Uh, Bobby Roode's title defenses when he was world champion because he had some amazing matches. We did get to see the uh, steel cage match last week. Oh, like a fraction of it. Like, but then they're going to waste our whole time with this whole segment. Are you kidding? Oh well. We have Eli Drake backstage with Chris Adonis. Adonis tonight is going to be celebrating Eli Drake. It's the facts of Eli's life mm. tonight on Impact Wrestling. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to see what it's about. Eli wants to know who the special guest is. Adonis hasn't booked a special guest, so we will find out what that's about later on. Mm, I don't know. We see a promo package, scary graphics and everything. Brian Cage is coming to Impact. Mm -hmm. We actually saw him not long ago recently in... Um a show and that was in the International Salt show that was in Sydney. That's right. And I bought one of his shirts because I'd already spoken to Scott Damore six, seven months ago, asking him what's coming up, what's happening on the show, what do I need to know so I can do my reviews properly. And he let me know Brian Cage is coming. You don't know Scott Damore. Of course I do. I talk to him weekly. No, you don't. We catch up about the show. 
He checks in. No, he doesn't. He needs to know what, what I think so he can improve impact every week. He's, dude, you, you have two numbers on your phone. It's me and Knockout Fiona. That's it. And even my number, you don't even have saved. What the hell? I don't show you my numbers. They're in a secret thing. I've got Scott Demore's number. I talk to him weekly. Hey, why do you think Impact's been What's improving so much? Thing? Why do you think it's been improving? Because of you. You're saying because of I'm you. I'm not saying that. You just said it. Well, right. I'm not saying that. All right. I'm not, I would never claim that. Right. I would never claim that. Okay. How arrogant are you to think that? I would never claim that. It's a lot of hard work from a lot of people behind the scenes. Dude, making the show what it is. Spitting on me How now. dare you? Dude, you're, How spit- dare you? you're spitting on me now. Stop. How dare you? Stop. Doesn't mean my impact isn't value. My input isn't value. Doesn't mean that. <laughs> Alright, you this shirt. God damn it. Can I get a napkin? EC3 and Alberto Alpatron versus Goose and Boone for the main event. Oh, I'm just gonna let you keep calling on that because I'm not you're not gonna stop. Patron and EC3 are working like a well-oiled machine. You see them out there, like two champions. Hmm. Whereas Goose and Impact are just falling apart. Falling for the dumbest little things, like Getting in the way of the ref, getting in the way of each other. What is this? I don't know. I thought they had a this? great offense. Nah, nah. EC3 had a couple of moments of fantastical, fantastical TW. Fantastical? Yeah, because it was better than fantastic. It was better than amazing. Fantastical TW. Okay. This is tactical awaiting at its greatest, dude. At its greatest. Is it bringing tactical weight? Oh, okay, don't worry. Continue. I've always used... What are you talking about? I've always used no, TW. No, what no, are you talking I'm about? I'm not even questioning that. I just didn't know why anyway. you brought that in. Anyway, continue. A couple of moments that he showed, but one in particular that I wanted to highlight, which is my TW moment of the week. It's when EC3 pulled, pulled Boone off El Patron when Boone thought he had the win. Thought he was too good. Thought he was awesome. Pulled him straight out of the ring. And then him and Patron used Boone like a, a training dummy. I mean, Patron DDT'd Boone's head on the ramp. Maybe hit him so hard he probably thinks he is Boone now. Mm. You're being too harsh. You just got boomed. You're being way too harsh on Johnny Impact. Oh, it was great. EC3 is a TW machine. No, machine! It's not obviously a TW machine because they lost. And that was my TW highlight of the week. What, them losing? Well, Moose completely cheats. He hits a lariat and a pin on El Patron because Johnny Impact was the illegal man in the ring distracting Patron. Mm. Johnny Impact was completely illegally in the ring, distracting Patron in the corner. Patron got the double foot stomp warrior's way in the corner on him, completely destroying Boone. If he was a legal man, match over. Done. Done. But, but he cheated. He cheated he and distracted Patron. And because of that, Moose gets the win from behind. Patron grabbed him though. He used the Moose. Moose hits him from behind with a cheating lariat to win. Okay, whatever your... I think your definition of cheating is Same very Same old diff- Boone. Always cheating. You're even using the chance now. Where are you learning? What's happening? I've always used the chance. What are you talking about? What is happening right now? I don't What's get happening? it. Yeah. This is Stooge Club. Oh, no. And now we're up to our main event and what should be the main event of any episode of Impact. It's Chris Adonis presenting the facts of Eli Drake's life. Fact one. Eli Drake is the greatest champion ever. Mm. And we see a video package improving. It's not, it's not really proving it. Oh, it proves it exactly. You see him. How many times does he hold the title up? Greatest champion ever. Do you have a video package improving he's not the greatest champion ever? I don't personally, but... There's so no... there's... He's the greatest champion ever. Chris Adonis proved it. Fact two, he's the greatest dresser ever. And there was a video package to prove it. Okay, that I can't dispute, I guess. Greatest dresser ever. The man has the fashion sense of a god. Fact number three, he's the greatest friend ever. (coughs) Oh, that's a bit... 
Greatest I feel like he's friends in Adonis and mini playing this whole time. He but. has elevated Adonis. He is the greatest friend ever. I think Adonis he, he needed felt elevated. So sorry for Adonis having to wear the Elevation. turkey suit. But then Adonis wore the hell out of that turkey suit. As we find out later on. But unfortunately, the wrong video package plays for greatest friend ever. Which very much upsets Adonis. He's ready to go to the production team. He should be right back there punching the production team in the face. Eli Drake stops him. Cooler heads prevail. He's like, don't worry. I know what you mean. And goes through and uh, declares himself the greatest champ, greatest dresser, greatest friend ever. Which leads, of course, unequivocally to him being the greatest man of all times, which he declares himself. Wrong, wrong, wrong. No, and no, that's what you I... heard him say it. I am the greatest man that ever lived. No, no, no I'm going to stop you right there. Because that's when my boy, the real greatest man that ever lived, Austin Aries. Glory Scott. Hound. Glory Hound? Glory Hound. How is he a glory He's hound? He's trying to steal Chris Adonis' beautiful tribute to Eli Drake. No, he didn't. Hijacking the video package, it interrupting it. No, he just made Eli Drake look like a fool where he, you know, glory was meant hound. to be. So yeah, he came out and pretty much put them both on the show. Yeah, so he says he's got some facts, like I've held some titles, and I've been a world champion, real. I've been an X Division champion. like some real facts, but anyway. Fake news, fake news. Um, talks about going around the world winning titles, fake news. It's, what? Fake news. How is it fake news? Now, him going around the world winning titles. What titles did he win? What, what titles we did saw he win? win at the International Soul. I don't remember that. We won Ricochet's title off him. I don't remember that. I remember clapping Ricochet at the end. Dude, you jumped in my face and started celebrating. Yes! What the hell are you on about? <laughs> no. Don't recall it. Don't recall it. <laughs> that was the night we met the... Good... No, that wasn't the night we met the goddess Laurel. No, that was no. a different night. No, we met... Uh, was it Will Ospreay? Uh, yeah, we met Will Ospreay and uh, Gumby. What's his name? Uh, uh, Z no, no, it was Zach, Zach Sabre Jr. Jr. Yeah. Brian Cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah that, I don't remember Austin Aries being there. Austin Aries, the main event was Austin Aries and Ricochet. Don't remember that. Sorry, oh. fake news. So Eli cuts a promo back. You just said you bought a shirt from that night. From Brian Cage, who was there? Yeah, and Austin He was there. <sighs> okay, don't worry, don't worry. Eli cuts a promo back, much better than, than Austin Aries' promo. It just puts Austin Aries right in his place. I don't know. He I says, like... Aries challenges him. He's like, no, of course not, you fool. You know, just come here and get in my family. I'm Eli Drake. Walks away. And, of course, the last moment of TW in the show, and a great example of it, is Chris Adonis waiting, waiting for Aries. The second he turned his back, boom, with the title. Mm -hmm. Boom. You're going to turn your back on Chris Adonis. Mm -hmm. He's a TW master. Mm -hmm. He has studied at the feet of the stooge okay. and learnt the art of oh, TW. Feet of the stooge. He's a black belt in TW. Okay. Black belt okay. in TW. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Boom, with the belt. Show Darius where you belong. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Well, then, then what happened? So then Eli Drake calls for a ref. It's match on. We have a impromptu world heavyweight title match. This is, this is how much of a great man Eli Drake is. It's how much of a great man he is that he gives us an impromptu world title match out of the goodness of his heart. He doesn't have to do that. He didn't have to give us a world title match. He's that generous. He's that generous that for us, the audience of Impact Wrestling, he wanted to give us a special moment. Him versus that traitor, Austin Aries. Because he Adonis attacked him from behind, so he thought he could get an easy no, win. No, that's just TW. That's just TW. Okay. You can't help that. He Did he tell Adonis to do that? No. Did he? No. That, hey, it's out of his hands. Okay. It's out of his hands. Yeah. No. He, he had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to give us a special moment. A returning, you know, quote unquote, hero. Versus the greatest champion of all times. Mm -hmm. how, how generous is this man? And because of that, Austin Aries cheats, gets a brain buster on him. That has to be an illegal move. You can't just drop a man on his head. That has to be an illegal move. And the ref counts one, two, three. 
because the ref's so blind he didn't that's notice that it's an finisher. illegal move. What do you mean it's you illegal? Can't do that. That's got to be an illegal move. How can he not do that? Are you listening you can't just to yourself? Drop someone on their head. <laughs> like wrestling's about art and finesse and style. Like our champion Eli Drake, the true champion. About finesse and style well, he's, and class. He's class. not the champion anymore because now um, we've got some dude that came out. Austin Aries, the real greatest man of all time. Did Gr- you see his polo shirt? It Look was the way Eli Drake was dressed. Yeah, he That's was dressed champion. like he was on That's a, champion. a runway where uh, a champion. He looked where like a Austin champion. Aries was dressed like a wrestler, dressed like a hobo. Black polo shirt and black pants. He found them in the bin outside. Dude, looks like a you, hobo. What are you on about? The rope you're wearing right now looks like you found it outside. This is a fine silk robe imported from Persia. Made specifically for me. This is a one of a kind exclusive. Dude, is this paper stu- mache? Stop touching my shit. <laughs> anyway, that traitor, Austin Aries, stands tall. With the title at the end of the show. Eli Drake's been screwed. He's been screwed. This is not fair. He hasn't been, been screwed. screwed. Been he hasn't been screwed. been screwed at all. He, Austin, he tried to get the... He tried to get the... As you say, the TW. You screwed. know, E40 had the win. And he then, had nothing to do with that. And he then had, Austin He Aries, did not control Chris you know, Adonis. Chris Adonis is a grown man with his own thoughts. Who can do what he wants. Eli yeah. Drake cannot control that. Okay. Is my opinion at least valid on the show at all? Or is it just going to be mostly... You can try, I guess. Okay. It's up to the audience. Mm-hmm. If they want to listen to you or the truth. Yeah, you're the truth now, are you? The truth. You're stealing Austin Aries. The thing. Stooge Club. That's all we are. But, and if you're not with us, you're against us. But, and i got two words for you. Suck it! Anyway... Finalize the show, even though who really cares what you have to say. What was your match of the night? Well, I'm going to have to give it to um, Austin Aries. That wasn't a match. Yes, it was. It wasn't a match. That was that was grand there was a title. Ref. That's what that was. There was a ref. So? There was two so? wrestlers in the ring. So? There was a title on the that line. Was grand theft That was title. a match. So that was my match of the night. Grand what was yours? theft title my match of the night has to be how can it not be was the undefeated km undefeated beating bobby trader undefeated still the greatest wrestler and mma fighter of all times my man km who what do you even say km undefeated you didn't watch are you calling me a liar are you calling me a liar km is undefeated he's undefeated in wrestling and he's undefeated in mma you've been non-stop lied throughout this whole show undefeated km the greatest of all times soon to be world heavyweight champion because how can you keep an undefeated man from winning the title he can't be beaten he's gonna win Mm. can't be beaten I don't know what Undefeated. I, mean. I don't know. Cannot what be beaten. To do with you KM anymore. is the greatest. I don't know what to do with you anymore. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm that sorry, brings fans. us to the end of the show. You want to say goodbye? Uh, I guess so. It's been good seeing Anyway, this is Stooge Club. <laughs>